Sometimes having a simple but well-made tool can make all the difference in making our jewelry creation easy and enjoyable. Today I have a review for you of a tool that was sent to me by the folks at Speedy Jig. It's intended for making paracord bracelets, which is great if you're looking for gifts for guys, but I've got ideas for using it in lots of different ways. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So the folks at Speedy Jig contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out one of their jigs for making paracord jewelry. And I'm always looking for an opportunity to make jewelry for guys because it's one of those things that we don't do very often and it can be tough to find those kinds of designs. This is actually a bracelet I made with the kit and let me show you how it works. So you get this, which <laughs> will not all fit. I asked for the XL the longer one because I had ideas of making wrap bracelets and with this length I could actually make one that wraps three times around your average woman's size wrist. Also being this long you could use this to make necklaces and I love the way this adjusts so that you can use it to make any length that suits you. And for those designs that need to be held under tension while you're making them, it's just really helpful. So what you get is the jig, and it's quite heavy. It's nice. It's got rubber feet on the four corners. It's got a wide base so that it's stable and doesn't move about. And like I said, it's some pretty heavy duty, thick sheet metal, as you can see. So it's nice and solid. You get the jig, which is adjustable. You also get 10 feet each of three different types of paracord and four clasps, which I thought was a mistake, but then when I read more carefully, I realized that that's by design. You also get uh, a book of instructions, which I found a little confusing to begin with. I had to go online. I found a YouTube video explaining how to make a cobra knot bracelet, which is what this is. I then found an instructable explaining how to do the two color. And then it wasn't until I looked at the Speedy Jig website that I figured out something that was perplexing to me. So the way this works is the first thing you need to do is take a measurement of the wrist you want to fit. Guys' wrists tend to be around 8 inches where women's average is 7, but of course, like everything, they vary, so if you can get a measurement, that would be best. Then you set your speedy jig according to the directions. Now remember when I've talked to you about sizing bracelets that the thicker the bracelet the longer you need to make it and this has quite a bit of thickness which so it makes sense that they say if you want to make a bracelet for a seven inch wrist you need to make it eight inches long and then you adjust your jig for the length that you want and you just loosen this wing nut and then it slides so it says for an eight inch bracelet slide the tab to the eight inch ruler mark I was a little confused by this because let's flip it. <laughs> their picture looks different from mine. Theirs has an extra bump, so I wasn't quite sure where to put it. And if that happens to you, a better thing to do is to measure from here to here. And once you get your bracelet on there with the clasps, you'll see better where you need to measure. The next thing they tell you to do is to attach, is to take one of your buckles and separate it. And put one end over one side and one end over the other. And actually, yeah, do it. They kind of have a bend, so if you do it with the bend facing down, because these tabs are angled, it will make the pieces be somewhat parallel to the, the work area. And then you set this aside and get ready your cord. And they tell you you will need about 12 inches of cord for every inch of bracelet. Now this was the part that confused me. What you're going to do is actually choose a different buckle. This is just an anchor buckle. 
it isn't the one that you're going to use in your bracelet. And that made all the difference because it totally confused me because if you put it in the, f the, the female end, if you put your loop in the female end, and I'll, I'll go back, get back to this in a minute. If you put it over the female end, it did have room for this thick paracord and for it to fit over the slot. But if you put it over the male end, it won't stay. And then I realized what they were telling you to do was actually use a different one to attach. So that goes on there like that. And this is just a temporary holder. So that, now that makes a whole lot more sense. The yellow one is just there to hold your cord in place. And then you fold your cord in half, slip it through one of the loops of your clasp, and then slip the ends through, just like you saw me do a minute ago, and pull it snug. That's called the lark's head knot. Then you slip your other two ends through your other part of the clasp. And if you need to, if it's fraying like crazy, you can take your lighter and burn the end. Okay. That's going to behave a little better now. So you want to put both those ends through the other side of your clasp, the one you'll be using, not the anchor clasp. Make sure those are both angled the same way. Okay. Now we can attach this to the other clasp. And now you can get an accurate measurement. So if I say I want to make a seven inch bracelet, I want to measure from this part of the clasp all the way up to where it will meet this part of the class, which will be right here at this edge, because this is going to buckle into this. So now I can slide that. So that's right about seven and a quarter. And if you look at the jig, it looks like it's about a quarter of an inch off from the measurement here. But this gives you some place to start. Let's double check that. Let's see. From there to where it's going to end here. Yeah, seven and a quarter. From here, you start making your cobra knot. I'm just going to turn this around. And this is where having the jig is really nice. I have this leaning up against the back wall of my recording booth, and this is actually really nice. Now, one of the videos I watched online, he didn't use a jig at all. He did this exact same thing. He didn't need an anchor clasp, but I thought it was really nice doing it under tension. So I'm going to remember right. Take the right one, go over your two core cords. That's what these are. Over. Take your other one, go over that, under the core, and up and through. And then pull. And then repeat with the left. Over the core, over that one, under the core, and up and through. And that's all there is to it. So that was left, right, left, right. And that's it. That's all there is to it. There are lots of other designs out there for you to do. I really enjoyed doing this one with the two colors. I'll have a link in the description box to the Instructable where I follow the directions for making this. I liked doing the two colors because I always use the same one, so it was always red because it switches sides. And I do tend to mix up my left and my right. I read somewhere that it's folks who have a strong right-left brain connection that mix up their right and left. And so that's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I did that right. 
But you can see once you get going, you can make one of these bracelets in just a few minutes. If this is something you enjoy doing this kind of knotting, making bracelets, necklaces, keychains, all sorts of things, you might find the jig helpful. Is it necessary? No, not 100% necessary. But is it handy? Yes. I saw the retail price was listed as $40 and discounted to $30. So I'm thinking $30 is probably around the average price you'll pay. Maybe a little pricey. You could buy the smaller one if you're only going to make smaller items. Could you do something very similar with the bulldog clip? Yes. But if this is something you enjoy making, it might be handy. And be watching next week when I'm going to show you how to make a, one of those very popular wrap style bracelets using this. And I think that's when this will really be handy. I hope that you found this helpful and interesting and inspiring. And don't forget Valentine's Day is coming up. So a nice survival piece of jewelry might be something great for the guys in your life. If you're interested in the supplies, click on the little I or the tag in the upper right to go to my blog post. There's also a link in the description box and at my blog post I always have a complete supply list with links to products. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and if you'd like bonus tutorials every month, take a look at my Patreon page. Happy creating. Bye-bye.